Hi, my name is Cynthia Hedge Morrell, and I'm the Councilwoman for District G in New Orleans. Wonderful. Ms. Councilwoman Hedge Morrell, thank you for your time. Thank you for inviting me. Well, it's our pleasure. Um, on behalf of the 60,000 folks in our database and 90,000 of you our site once a month, we just want this to be perceived as a conversation. Okay, so uh, folks just want to get to know you a little bit better. We know you've been leading us for a long time in this community, but there may be a few people out there that don't know the real Miss Cynthia Hedge Morrell, Mrs. Cynthia Hedge Morrell. So take us back to the childhood. Tell us about who you are and what brings you to where we are today. Oh, uh, I'm a citizen of New Orleans since birth. I was born in Charity Hospital, as was everyone doing. Charity, all right. Yeah, At everybody. least the good questions. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, Grew up in New Orleans, uh, went to Valina C. Jones, Fredericks, then I went to Xavier Prep. Okay. Went on to Xavier University, uh, got married, moved to Chicago for a couple of years, went to, uh, came back to school, went to UNO and graduated in education. Okay. And uh, got a master's from uh, Loyola University and MS. Okay. Uh, and went back to UNO and did a, a plus 28 hours for certification and administration. Okay. Uh, what people usually don't know about me. There you go. That is a good one. Um, I have a varied background. Before I went into education, I worked in marketing for Alberto Culver in Chicago. Really? So that's one thing people don't know about me. Another thing people don't know about me is that uh, I'm a licensed thoroughbred trainer. Have been since <laughs> 1989. Have raised uh, and bred thoroughbreds since the early 80s. Any Kentucky Derby winners? No, but some really nice ones that have run at the fairgrounds. Uh -huh. um, and in being a licensed thoroughbred uh, trainer, there are only um, three or four African-American women that have uh, attained that. And okay. I think I was like number two or three. So I'm really proud of that. That is awesome. And uh, have loved horses since I was a little girl. And the other thing I like that people don't know about me is I grew up on Claiborne Avenue. Oh, yeah? Uh, during the time before I-10. Mm -hmm. So I remember the trees. I remember Mardi Gras. Mm -hmm. I remember when that was such a vibrant community. Okay. And so it, it makes my dedication to getting African-American businesses and young entrepreneurs, no matter what race you are, because that's what existed on Claiborne Avenue. Let's talk about that because one of the big issues, um, we polled our audience on some, some key initiatives that they would like, that they care about. One of them is equity and fairness, okay? Um, again, you're talking to an audience that has, about half of our audience has college degrees. Mm -hmm. So you're looking at people who have the wherewithal to do things but feel like that this city has not allowed them to shine, not allowed to give them the opportunity they feel like they deserve. Talk to that with you as councilwoman over these next four years. How can that young generation who's gone on, done the right things, got educated, how can they uh, anticipate being included in the city? Well, we have a very strong economic uh, development package. Okay. Uh, it started this year. I serve on that committee. Okay. And uh, I've worked with the other committee members. We passed. Uh, an ordinance for the first time that says 50% of all contracts let out by the city and the council should have uh, all comp they should have 50% local participation awesome. and 35% should be minority. Now minority could be uh, but it had that you had gone through and gotten the designation as being a DBE. Okay. And so that's what it is. I mean okay. it could be that you're Hispanic, you be Asian, you could black, it doesn't, you know, it's that you go through the city process okay. to have yourself listed as a minority uh, business. Right. And that's so that when these big companies come down and build, uh, bid on these multi-million dollar contracts, and the first thing they always like to tell us, we can't find anybody. That's right. They all so we want to have a very, and, and I encourage everyone that's listening to this, go to the city's website, look for the DBE. Um, and find out how to regi register yourself mm -hmm. and what services you provide. Because we just did a big contract for our, um, 
utilities. Okay. And the total amount of that contract for the next year is going to be close to six million dollars. And one of the things that you know they one person wrote back, he was disqualified, but he wrote back and said he couldn't find any minorities. Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, you didn't look very hard if you couldn't find them in New Orleans. You can't find them anywhere. That's right. But what we're trying to say is that we as elected officials have to speak for our constituents. Absolutely. After Katrina, one of the things that a lot of people didn't understand is that all of that money that came in, came in through the federal government and it came in under Bush and it was no bid. Right. And therefore... Like the hauling of... The trash, hall and the trash. All, yeah, we, we watched all those contracts. Tracks. But also other things like going in and bringing one of the one of the things that surprised me, the body bags. Mm. You wouldn't think of that. But I remember the coroner, I had to go up to Baton Rouge because he said they brought us the wrong thing. And so they brought, you know, the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Um, talk to me about one of the other issues that our audience is very concerned about is community engagement. They feel like, to the point you're mentioning, there's a lot of things that are happening in the city. We hear about these billions of dollars coming, but nobody seems to know anything about it, how to get engaged. Talk to us a little bit about that aspect. Well, in District D, which is a district I represent, mm -hmm. is one of the most devastated districts. And we started uh, having community meetings in Baton Rouge a week after Katrina. Yes, indeed. And uh, we, we had the first charrette at Ponch in Pontchartrain Park, and we pulled together professors from uh, UNO and SUNO, and uh, Duane came down and did a free uh, planning process for the district, mm -hmm. and we were a we kind of like were the foreshadow for what right. went on to be first the Lambert plan and then the UNO plan. I remember plan. that, yeah, sure. And um, I'm I mean I, this is the way. And the other thing I did tell you in the intro is that I was an elementary school teacher and then I was the principal of McDonald 15 in the French Quarter <laughs> for 20 years. Wow. So, you know, the Little Red Schoolhouse and I are married <laughs> to each other. But that's where I learned that every person has to come to the table and participate. Right. If you really want to have a plan that everyone can buy into. Interesting. So when we did our planning, everyone came to the table, head custodian, cafeteria manager, crossing guard. Everybody sat down with the faculty and the parents because that was the only way we could make sure it was a program that everybody was going to buy into. And I've done that in my office. I've done that with the community meetings I go out to. And uh, I think that that's probably one of the hallmarks of District D. It's a very engaged, participatory process. And you mentioned um, kind of going out into the community too. And this will be my last question. This comes from Facebook. Um, and if you'll answer this pretty briefly for me, um, the question is around how can nonprofits and organizations get better funding? What can they do, and how can you? Well, help? right now, nonprofits and and, um, and the like are really facing a crunch. And what I think we have to do is we have to look at going to to, to bigger foundations, okay. like the Kellogg Foundation, the Wat, uh, Watson Foundation, and. Uh, and even banding together and not going as each individual little right, group right, trying to right. get a piece of the pie. Where they have to make a decision. That's it. But if you have similar goals, like if you wanted to do something on, on, on um, kids, you talked about the Boys and Girls mm -hmm. Club. So why not take all those organizations and go after some big money? Right. Hack them together. That's it. Right. Because. Well, but we understand that, and I, I think we get your point. You've been doing that in this community for a while. If yeah. you would, please, we got we got to cut. I know, I see please my Please remind second. folks of who you Cynthia are. Cynthia Hedge-Morrell, number 50 on the ballot. Please vote for my re-election as Councilwoman District D. Thank you very much.